In this video, I want to talk about ticks and tick diseases. How I work to avoid them and what I think you should do to avoid them and why it is important to avoid these diseases at all costs almost. And uh, I want to mention first of all that I am not a medical doctor. I am not an expert in tick diseases. So uh, please do your own research as well. This video is only based on my own experience and my own reading about these diseases. Uh, so uh, please also do your own research. To protect yourself from tick diseases, you can take a lot of different measures and they are kind of on different levels. The most basic level is to not even get any ticks on you. <laughs> and on that level, you can do several things. There are uh, some compounds that you can put on your clothes uh, to uh, deter ticks from even walking onto you. I've never used any of these and I will explain why uh, in a few moments, but you could definitely look into these because uh, some of them seem to be effective. Uh, another general piece of advice uh, that I try to follow is that you should avoid walking in tall grass where possible. Because in my experience, uh, you almost always get the ticks when you walk in grass that is tall, that is like up to uh, almost to your knees. That kind of grass, that seems to be a place where ticks love to sit. And I guess that is because they mostly try to attach themselves to uh, wild animals like deers. So they need to be at a certain height to, to catch on to the deer's belly, for example. And... Uh, Whenever I walk in tall grass, I always check my whole body afterwards for ticks. And that is a pretty good uh, measure of prevention because usually it seems like the ticks take several hours up to a day before they actually start biting you. They, they want to find a good spot to bite you. So if you go out in tall grass and you come home, if you check your whole body uh, after ticks immediately, you can usually find them before they get a chance to bite you. It can be pretty tricky sometimes to spot the ticks on you. Uh, definitely if you have someone who can help you check, maybe check your back for example. Uh, but usually I think that um, you can sense them crawling around on you. That is usually how I uh, detect them. I, I sense that there's something creepy on me and I look and oh, it's a tick. Uh, but it can sometimes be hard. So you have to be really like vigilant. And it's also good to know that the ticks can come in different sizes. The smallest ones, the tick nymphs, the like uh, tick kids, <laughs> they are like extremely extremely small like almost like a grain of sand they are like incredibly small but the good news is that these ticks since they are so young uh, usually haven't been on any other animals before you which means they probably do not carry any diseases or at least the probability is lower and then there are ticks that are a bit older that are not nymphs that have been around for a year or so and these are a lot more dangerous because uh, they have been on some other animals before you and if that animal had a disease then you might get it as, as well and the bigger ticks they are like i don't know like a few millimeters long at the longest a couple of millimeters and they are easier to spot and if the tick has started to bite me i usually just yeah, just pluck it uh, uh, as close to the skin as possible to remove as much of the tick as possible. There might be in some cases something left, a small part, but that is not the end of the world, I think. Uh, there are like special tools that you can buy to remove ticks, but personally, I think that is just like kind of not that necessary. Like it's, it's completely uh, fine to remove the tick uh, with just your fingernail. That I, to me it works nice. You can also use uh, maybe tweezers. Uh, that's uh, a good way of doing it. And uh, in Sweden where I live there are three different kinds of diseases that you could get uh, from a tick that uh, bites you. And uh, one of them is like not that um, uh, serious at all so we don't even need to talk about that one but the other two can be very serious and the reason I actually take tick diseases seriously is because I know several people who have had them and who had severe consequences in their lives 
So uh, the first tick disease that I want to talk about that we have here in Sweden is TBE, which is a virus. And since it is a virus, there also exists a vaccine for it. And this vaccine is very efficient and has no known like side effects. You can even give it to very small children. And I have actually uh, vaccinated me and my whole family is vaccinated, including uh, my one and a half year old daughter. And you need to, at least the, the vaccine uh, we take here in Sweden, you need to take three doses over like a period of a year. Uh, for it to be fully effective and then uh, you need to refill every few years to, to keep it updated but uh, this is something I really recommend if you ever uh, get ticks on a regular basis <laughs> to, to get this vaccine and if, of course if you have TB in your country because this disease can be pretty serious and in worst case it can cause paralysis and like it can get into your brain so you definitely do not want that. The other common tick disease that we have here in Sweden and that exists in many parts of the world is Lyme disease or Borrelia. We call it Borrelia here in Sweden, I think it's because the bacteria is, is called Borrelia. And this one can be pretty nasty and it's also harder to protect yourself against. Since it is a bacteria, uh, you cannot uh, take a vaccine against it. Uh, so anyone can get it at any time basically. And this one I have several friends who got uh, like uh, paralyzed face in, for like years after getting it. And you can get all kinds of nasty skin rashes and pains and like you definitely do not want to get this because it can manifest in many ways and it can last for years these effects of uh, this bacteria. You, of course you can get cured uh, using antibiotics but the effects uh, of the damage that this bacteria makes can last for years so you definitely do not want to get Borrelia. So whenever I have a tick that actually bite me, and I mean, I had many ticks in my life. I grew up on the countryside and uh, I've had maybe 40 ticks or so. And luckily I have never become sick uh, from any of them. But I think it is uh, a lot due to uh, me being very vigilant when I've had a tick bite. So when I get a bite, uh, I always uh, watch the bite daily for uh, at least a week after the bite. Because if you get Borrelia, uh, a very clear sign that almost always shows up if you have it is that the rash, the, the red rash around the, the bite starts growing. And if it grows beyond the diameter of five centimeters, which is like this maybe, uh, in diameter, then uh, you should definitely go see a doctor because then it might be Borrelia. And here you see some pictures of uh, how a Borrelia bite might look. And from what I understand, it can take up to a week uh, until you see this. So if you get a tick bite, after removing the tick, keep an eye on that bite for at least a week and really check if you have this kind of uh, big skin rash because then uh, it might be Borrelia. Uh, the good news is that if you notice this uh, in time and take antibiotics, you go to a doctor and, and show this and they give you antibiotics, uh, then usually it's completely fine. It is when you don't notice this and you just let it be that you can get problems. Those are the big dangerous diseases we have here in Sweden at least, TBE and Borrelia or Lyme disease. And what I do is against TB. I have the vaccine, which keeps me pretty safe. And against Borrelia, what I do is, if I get a tick bite, I check myself on that bite for up to a week to make sure that I don't see any Borrelia rash. And of course, I also notice how I'm feeling. If I get a fever or something without a good explanation, a week after getting a tick bite, I would also definitely go to a doctor because that could also be a sign of Borrelia. I also want to be clear that if you live in a different country than me, you need to check what diseases could you get from ticks in your country, because this varies a lot. And I noticed, for example, that in the United States, there are like more than 10 different diseases you could get from ticks. And if you have that many diseases, you have to basically read up on each and every one of them, like I've done with the Swedish diseases, and see like how you can protect yourself against each disease. And 
now we come to the reason why I don't use any like tick spray or any like um, compounds uh, to avoid getting ticks on me. Uh, I mean, all of these need to be poisonous in some way, uh, at least against the ticks. And I just don't feel that it is warranted uh, because we only have these two diseases in Sweden. I, I know how to protect myself with pretty good uh, probability from them. So I don't feel the need to do anything extra above that. But if I would have been living in a country with like 10 or 20 different tick diseases that all of them are nasty in some way, then I would probably use some kind of compound on my clothes that smells in a certain way or that like deters the ticks. Uh, because then it just gets unmanageable to keep track of all the different diseases and how to protect yourself against each one of them. Uh, so that is something you look into depending on where you live. So just Google like uh, tick diseases and your country and see uh, how you need to um, react if you get a tick bite in your country. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful or at least that I raised awareness about tick diseases. Uh, they can be very nasty and the effects can last for years. So I advise you to definitely protect yourself as well as you can against them. Thank you for watching. See you soon again. Did you know that the future of this YouTube channel relies heavily on support by viewers like you? For $5 per month, you can support this YouTube channel and in return, you will get access to my library of 15 bonus videos. I make a new Patreon exclusive bonus video every month. The latest one, for example, is where I edit raw files from my Patreon supporters. I also do photo critiques. I do uh, exclusive macro photography adventures that nobody except my Patreon supporters get to see. So please consider supporting me on Patreon. It is very much needed and very much appreciated.